2023 had been a year of bizarre fashion trends. Bally core, fairy core, Barbie core, the coastal grandmother look. The ridiculousness goes on and on. It almost feels like people are running out of aesthetics to latch on to and make something out of. There's something so surreal about this age of creating an aesthetic out of every single possible thing. And it's definitely something we're going to look back on and have that God, what the hell were we thinking moment. But nothing epitomizes this surrealism more than the quiet luxury slash old money aesthetic. I made a video a while ago about Succession's old money problem. How I think people were wrong to use its costuming as a basis for this old money aesthetic. I misunderstood what the clothes in the show actually represents. And I wanted to make sort of like a part two to that video to further talk about this trend. Because it's 2024 now and this monstrosity does not seem to be going away anytime soon. When I first discovered this trend, it was around late 2022, and I loved it. Partly because Logomania had completely taken over the world, and it was almost impossible to avoid its sheer monstrosity. But also because it's very synonymous with my own personal minimalist style. I do love the concept of luxury and luxurious clothing as much as the next person does. So there's definitely some hypocrisy in me changing my mind about this trend, because my closet is basically made up of one single neutral palette and conventionally classic pieces. But that doesn't change how negatively I feel about what this trend represents and why I think it's just as bad as the new money slash logomania aesthetic, if not worse. There seem to be varying ideas of what quiet luxury actually means. Harper's Bazaar calls it a move away from logos, from anything too of the moment or trend led, investment pieces that are classic and timeless, designed to be worn for decades. British Vogue calls it a more low-key approach to luxury, less austere than minimalism, but more polished than normcore. Elle calls it a new age minimalism, with a larger focus on investment pieces and thoughtful shopping habits, curating a selection of high quality wearable pieces that seamlessly work with the rest of your wardrobe. Okay, so let's break this down because there's a lot to unpack here. While I agree with the essence of these definitions, it doesn't quite pinpoint what it truly is. And yes, I am aware that there are countless videos delving deeper into its origins, nature, and impact, a lot of which I've seen. But for the sake of condensing my argument into a few concise points, I'm going to base my argument off of these given definitions. I find it quite ironic that it's being deemed as nothing of the moment or trend-led. Because it being trend-led is exactly how I feel about it. In early 2023, I started seeing all these fast fashion stores like Zara, H&M, Massimo Dutti veering towards this style. And no matter how you feel about fast fashion, whether you hate it or you're a consumer of it, these stores are known for copying high fashion trends to make it more affordable for the average person. That's just a fact and the premise of their existence. So I don't see the description of classic and timelessness being synonymous with this trend. And let's call it what it is, it's a trend. I see how the idea of quiet luxury first started, focusing on investment pieces and curating a high quality capsule wardrobe, which I don't know if anyone remembers, but capsule wardrobes and curating high quality timeless pieces started way back in around 2019 and had its moment. And it's essentially the same thing. I actually prefer that trend or movement over this because it was genuinely about finding a tight limit of wearable clothes which you can effortlessly mix and match with one another, without having to buy an alarmingly immense amount of clothing which would ultimately collect dust. It was truly a rejection of overconsumption and creating more thoughtful shopping habits. This also happened around the time when the sustainability movement came about. People started shopping less, especially fast fashion, and consuming more thoughtfully, buying pricier but high quality items and long lasting pieces. That was how thrifting became so popular at that time. Downsizing their wardrobes, I was definitely one of those people. I sold half of my clothes, bought less, made it more minimal, quality over quantity. So the original essence of quiet luxury isn't new. And it seems to me that the high fashion industry had caught on to this movement, which is in conflict with their interests. You know, how are they going to make money if people consume more thoughtfully and conservatively? So, and this is just my theory, they brought about or fervently pushed quiet luxury into the limelight as a way to curb these new shopping habits, or rather feed into them. They understood that consumers are looking to buy more high quality classic pieces, meaning more standard looking clothes, which we've seen before for decades. So how do you sell something old? 
you repackage it. It's luxury, which means it's the highest of quality, even though the two nowadays are not necessarily synonymous with each other. But if you market something hard enough, eventually people will buy into it. For a long time and even now, it hasn't been easy evading this behemoth of a trend. It has been and still is everywhere. Every luxury brand came out with their own version of this. Suddenly brands which have been kept under the radar for so long began to resurface and skyrocket in sales like Laura Piana, Brunello Cuccinelli, The Row, etc. On a side note, if there's any brand which deserves that hype and authentically embodies quality and luxury, it would be The Row. I think they're on a league of their own, but that's a video for another time. And then we started seeing these influencers buying into and wearing all of these quiet luxury trends. Weekly hauls, multiple pieces each time. We see it in celebrity streetwear, which would undoubtedly make people flock to the stores or videos showing you how to achieve that look on a budget, which usually means consuming from fast fashion stores. Once again, it's promoting overconsumption, which goes against what quiet luxury was meant to stand for. Which is why I don't think this trend is timeless or classic. If anything, it's phony and pretentious. As opposed to the capsule wardrobe movement, it's more about achieving that look rather than actually being a conscious and sustainable consumer. There's just something very disingenuous about it. The issue I have with calling this or labeling this as quite luxury is that we're essentially making a trend out of something that couldn't be more normal. A multi-billion dollar trend, I might add. Taking a simplistic product such as a white shirt, slapping a logo on it, and then giving it a thousand percent markup. Doesn't that ring any bells to you? It's essentially the new money look in a new form, or should I say old form. The only difference is the logo is significantly more subtle or carefully concealed. And they also claim these clothes to have been made with better quality materials and better ethical standards. Which I'm not saying they don't, but like the logo itself, I'm sure we can all agree it doesn't justify the extortionate prices. The main fact of the matter is, at this moment in time, logos aren't selling anymore. Your loud drip isn't selling anymore. Looking like you just stepped out of a Supreme X Louis Vuitton catalog isn't selling anymore. And because fashion is cyclical and has been known to recycle every 20 years or so, these fashion retailing conglomerates have to look towards finding new trends and whatever would currently sell the most to make new money. Speaking of its cyclical nature, this brings me to the point that quiet luxury is supposed to be the new age of 90s minimalism, or at least it borrows ideas from minimalist aesthetics, which creates luxury from simplicity. Yet it doesn't quite capture the essence of what minimalist fashion is. Minimalist fashion came from the concept of ridding oneself of excess, distraction, and extravagance. Designers like Rick Owens and Phoebe Philo would create pieces based on minimalist contemporary art, architecture, and modern everyday life. Unlike actual minimalism, there isn't innovation, imagination, or artistic vision behind quiet luxury. Sure, it can look aesthetically pleasing, but it has the same sentiment of manifesting a set of interchangeable pieces onto a Pinterest board. Hence a comparison to the capsule wardrobe movement. It's not something new, is my point. Not to mention quiet luxury and logomania are both just as pretentious as the other. All these aesthetics, new money, old money, model off-duty look, ballet core, cottage core, more often than not, we're pretending to be something we're not. We can't all be rappers, heiresses, models, ballerinas, or Marie Antoinette living the peasant life. It's not to say that there's anything wrong with being pretentious, besides it being somewhat cringy, but don't act as if quiet luxury is above all that. In fact, even the new money aesthetic was actually borrowed from hip hop culture, which has a rich history and origin story. When hip hop first popularized this aesthetic, it was created as a reflection of the multicultural working class who couldn't afford luxury. It was attainable and aspirational, and people took that and reduced it to a hollowed shell of its source, flex culture, something luxury retailers immediately exploited and profited off of. It was only when Virgil Abloh brought it into the main luxury fashion scene, with his time at Louis Vuitton and his own brand Off-White, for instance, that it became a much more acceptable and respectable type of fashion. The same way they're doing to the quiet luxury aesthetic, it combines minimalism and that bit of old money aura and spat out hollowed forms of the two. It had its humble beginnings with conscious consumption, ridding excess, minimalism, back to basics. It was meant to be attainable, effortless, easy to emulate. Now the core idea of it's been lost amidst all the high fashion propaganda. 
With the capsule wardrobe movement and minimalism, they're meant to be for the average person. Quiet luxury, on the other hand, has significant elitist undertones to it. That exclusivity, being in the know, being a part of that circle, even though the average person who buys into this trend certainly cannot afford to have a wardrobe filled with Piana and Cuccinelli. Which brings me to the discussion of old money. You can't talk about quiet luxury without bringing up its association with it. These two things are often confused as one and the same. And while they can be synonymous with each other, they can be two separate concepts. But I don't think one can exist without the other, mainly because the thought of old money has become so synonymous with being quiet and low-key, as opposed to loud and flashy like the nouveau riche. And I think we really owe it to Succession for putting that connection into our heads, even though they're not even old money, as I've emphasized in my last video. Which, by the way, about my last video, to those who think I've missed a point of the show, I wasn't just talking about the show in general, because to take into account every aspect of the show would be irrelevant to the one specific thing I was talking about. I was explicitly highlighting the fashion in the show, which has caused a lot of buzz and paved way for all the talk about old money and quite luxury fashion. I don't think quiet luxury and old money was supposed to be connected that way. It just adds that layer of elitism to the trend fueled by the media and the fashion industry. You know how some people have pointed out that luxury fashion caters to the middle class who wants to look like upper class? It's exactly this reason. The fashion industry knows what consumers want and feed into it. They know we want to look rich even when we're not. I mean, this was how Logomania blew up. But now it's a new form of looking rich, looking like old money, which is even more entrenched in the upper echelons of society. So therein lies this obsession in finding out ways to look secretly rich. I saw this video floating around on YouTube titled, What Makes Siobhan Roy Look So Wealthy? It's like this 10 minute long video about all the outfits Shiv wore to make her look rich, a detailed analysis and breakdown of all her looks. Well, I can tell you why she looks so rich in two seconds, because she is rich. She's a literal billionaire. And that video certainly isn't the only one analyzing the clothing which makes the Roy's look wealthy. There are so many of them, and they all say the same thing. Muted colors, simple silhouettes, traditional, understated, standard-looking clothes. All the telltale signs of a secretly wealthy person. But if you take a lap around the central district of New York or London, that's a typical uniform for the everyday corporate employee. Most of it is just standard corporate work attire. If I hadn't known the Roys were rich, I would have thought they were standard people living in the city. And what's funny is that recently there's this new trend floating around, corporate coded, which is clearly an iteration of this look, a play on contemporary office attire. So why are people obsessed with looking rich? I think that first of all, anything that's luxurious and exclusive will automatically draw people in. That was what happened with Logomania. People would get up at the crack of dawn and queue for hours and hours just to get a hold of a supreme brick, or play all those mind games and jump through circus hoops to get an Hermes Birkin, which both brands are known to withhold stock numbers in order to create this sense of exclusivity. The quiet part of quiet luxury makes it sound even more exclusive. It's the fact that you have to be in the know and within specific circles to attain this luxury. So by dressing the part, you can emulate being in the upper echelons of society, residing in Park Avenue and paying thousands in tuition annually for your kid's private school. And the second thing is, by reducing what's essentially contemporary minimalism to an aesthetic, it makes it easier to digest for the general public. The same goes for any other trend or aesthetic for that matter. It's a very Gen Z thing. And being Gen Z myself, knowing what we're like, there just seems to be this desperate need to convince people of something we're not. It's a really detrimental and unhealthy reflection on who we are as a community. There's some deep insecurity there and identity crises that we have to sort out. It almost seems like we're terrified of being ourselves for whatever reason. But having said all this, there are certainly brands that embody quiet luxury in a way that's not contrived, dare I say. I mentioned a few earlier, Laura Piana, Brunello Cuccinelli, The Row. I need to make a separate video about The Row because it's just such an exquisite and spectacular brand, not just in terms of the artistic vision and concept behind it, but the quality is truly like no other and out of this world. If there's any brand which genuinely embodies quiet luxury, it would be The Row. It was doing quiet luxury way before any of this fiesta began. It transcended this trend by being trendless. It was only recently that it blew up in popularity, and in particular certain bags and pieces have become really sought after. But I digress. 
So Piana and Cuccinelli are also in this category, but it's a lot less modern and more old money looking. They've definitely modernized this for a newer audience, but so far they've remained more or less the same. And the prices are extortionate. I can't speak for the quality itself, I've never bought anything from them, and lord knows I can't afford anything from them full price, but I've heard some really good things about it. With Laura Piana, it's the summer walk loafers and the pouch bag which became really popular, all because the old money slash billionaire look craze. And you can hugely credit Succession for its success. Logan Roy and I think Kendall wore the Laura Piana caps, which also blew up. I was also at one point looking to get a cashmere cap from Laura Piana, having seen it on Succession. A more contemporary brand I would highlight would be Kate, spelt K-H-A-I-T-E. It's a lot like the row in quality and price, but more feminine. The row is a lot more masculine and man-repelling. I've heard this phrase being thrown around when describing the row, which I find a bit amusing. If we're veering towards brands with a heavier emphasis on artistic vision, as I mentioned earlier, Phoebe Philo era Celine, very creative, but simultaneously functional and utilitarian, made for the contemporary working woman. Rick Owens has been a cult favorite for those who are into fashion. It's very, if you know, you know. Same goes for Yoji Yamamoto. I mean, who could forget, or at least I couldn't, Carolyn Bissett Kennedy wearing that black Yoji Yamamoto skirt, which is absolutely iconic, and people went crazy for it at that time. In fact, if there's anyone who embodies quiet luxury, it would be Carolyn Bissett Kennedy. But back then, it was just 90s minimalism, or contemporary minimalism, when translated to the current era. It wasn't quite luxury or old money, it was just simple, chic, minimalist outfits. But also, she was a Kennedy, so she was actually a billionaire, not just pretending to be one. So my conclusion to all this would be to not overfixate on this label. Even if you like this look, and it's who you are naturally, simply acknowledging that it's nothing to fuss over just adds so much more character and individuality to your own style. Which was what Quiet Luxury was originally intended to be anyways, simple and effortless. It's fine to follow trends, but to be consumed by it is, needless to say, unhealthy and tacky. And if you must follow a trend, the only trend which never goes out of style is wearing whatever the hell you want, regardless of what the fashion industry tells you to.